Hey y'all, Pancake here. The clock is ticking on Dinoland's extinction, so tonight we're heading out to pay our respects for what may be our last time. And after that, we'll go over some big changes that just debuted with Lightning Lane, so come along and let's check it all out. Pardon my sweat, it is so humid here in Florida. I just escaped a giant storm and it is like poured rain over here so you can see all the water hanging and that's also contributing to the humidity. But came over here to Dinoland to pay my respects. I don't know when I'll be back here next and I wanted to come and possibly say my final goodbyes. I wanted to come over here and just tell you guys a little bit about the Tropical Americas project that Josh Tomorrow has talked about multiple times, actually back in 2022, Josh got on stage at D23 and kind of unveiled a piece of concept art that was, again, conceptual. It wasn't guaranteed that this was going to happen, but it was an idea that they had. And basically in that idea, in that version of the concept art, they had the Moana ride. It was basically like a Moana version of the Splash Mountain ride. And that was one of the main things that made up it. And then it looked like in the distance, there was like a Zootopia area. And then fast forward to last year at a destination D23 that was held here in Orlando, they showed new concept art, basically a totally different version that featured a Encanto themed land. When you first walked in, it looked like maybe Encanto or possibly Coco. And then where the Zootopia area and that first concept art sat, it now looks like there's an Indiana Jones piece. And I shouldn't say looks like, this is stuff that Josh had said. So this is all known stuff. We're just kind of waiting to see and get the final go ahead of if they're locked into that, I would imagine that that second concept art is what's gonna be what's going down here. So we're probably gonna get Encanto, probably gonna get Indiana Jones, going where Dinosaur is, and Dinosaur probably will just get rethemed to the Indiana Jones, because if you didn't know, Indiana Jones ride out in Disneyland that they have is the same track layout as our dinosaur here. So it's probably somewhat of an easy convert for them. It's the same track layout, same ride vehicle, They'll just have to retheme it, but I'm hoping that when they do retheme it, we get something that's completely different than what we have out there. I know the ride vehicle will be the same, but I'm really hoping that they kind of get original and do a whole new storyline uh, than the one that they already have. So yeah, just wanted to come here, pay my final respects and uh, see y'all real soon. Time is ticking for this. It's about to go extinct. I'm excited though, excited for the future. A lot of the signs in Dino Land are kind of ironic because they're talking about dinosaurs going extinct. And now that the land is on its way out, probably it's kind of saying goodbye to the land. The land's about to be extinct. All right, it seems like dinosaur has a short wait because of the rain scared everyone away. So this might be my last time on dinosaur. I don't know if I'll ever get back before it closes, but so here we go. Hello. I'm Dr. Marsh, director of the Dino Institute, and I hope you enjoyed those quaint exhibits in the old way. That's how dinosaurs have been presented to the public since the study of fossils began over 150 years ago. The Dino Institute has created the Time Rover that will literally transport you to the age of the dinosaurs. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller, and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. But let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you, and how you can help me make history today with the Time Rover. It's like this. If I can bring you back from the Cretaceous period, it stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur with you. Right now, our dino should be about here at the very end of the Cretaceous period. That's where you're going today. I've arrived, it seems, just in time to correct a little misstatement that is impossibly close to the giant asteroid impact that destroyed most life forms on Earth. Our tours are designed to take you to the early Cretaceous period. Flash photography? I wouldn't. It alters the homing signal, and that's not good. Oh, and one more thing. Those locked coordinates? Access. We're in. Now, here's the drill. You follow the homing signal to the Iguanodon, then I'll enlarge the transport field, and boom, you're back with one additional passenger extra large. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Trust me, what could go wrong? Hey. Now, let's
Let's go get that dino. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little one. Oleoramus. Hadrosar. Time to get serious. Locking autopilot on homing signal now. Hang on! I'm tracking a big dino on the scope. Could be ours. Computer, full stop. Identify. Carnotaurus. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go! Slow and identify. Sauropod. Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. Asteroid impact in 90 seconds. We better move it. Computer, what's happening? Loss of traction. Four wheel drive, move it! Evasive maneuver, left, right! Computer, now what? Carnotaurus. That's it! Abort mission! Abort! Abort! Iguanodon. Forget it! Get them out now! Asteroid impact. Brace yourself! This is it! They're not gonna make it! They're not gonna make it! Mission accomplished. You made it! I knew you would, and guess who made it back with you? I better find it before security does. Thanks for everything! Well, like I said, y'all, don't know if that's gonna be my last time, but I'm glad I got on Dinosaur before something happens to it. You know, again, like at D23, I'm sure we're gonna hear more about this project. I don't know if they'll announce a closure date of Dinosaur at that point, but we're gonna get confirmation that it's all happening, which I do believe it is. I don't think they would have teased all this if something wasn't gonna happen. I enjoyed this ride growing up. Still love it today. It is, it is a very, rough ride and it's still going to be a rough ride if they change this into Indiana Jones I would imagine like I said I think the same ride system's going to stay excited for the future it's always nice to see new things come sad to see old things go but I'm excited for Indiana Jones because I love Indiana Jones look y'all got the we got the baby dinosaur in front of the big dinosaur basically just chilling with his iguanodon now before I wrap this up, I want to talk about some changes that recently came to Lightning Lane at Walt Disney World. As of July 25th, what used to be referred to as Genie Plus is now called Lightning Lane Multipass. This also joins the system that hasn't changed that much called Lightning Lane Single Pass. Now this comes with some changes that I think are going to make visiting Walt Disney World much, much easier. So with the old system, you could buy your Genie Plus Pass at 12 a.m. the day of your visit, but couldn't make any selections until 7 a.m. hit the next morning. And once that time did hit, you could only make one Genie Plus selection at a time. In order to make new selections, you either had to have redeemed your first selection or two hours had to have elapsed, which either came first. And it was at that point then you could make another selection. And that was the old system. Now, with the new system, you can make your selection three days out from your visit. No more making them in the morning of your visit, which is so nice. And the best part is you can book three ride selections at once, as opposed to one at a time with the old system, which I think is a great, great improvement. If this sounds familiar, it kind of is. This is a lot like the old FastPass Plus system and how that worked. Now, if you're staying on property at a Disney hotel, you can book these selections even further in advance, which is nice. So those staying at Disney resorts can book theirs up to seven days in advance of their visit. And from what I understand, you can book all of your days at that time. It doesn't have to be seven days out from each day. It's seven days out from the day you check in. And you can book your trip for up to 14 days of park visits. This makes it easier for you to enjoy your vacation when you're here at the parks, rather than worrying about making your selections every morning of your stay, which was always a little frustrating. Now you're probably wondering, can I only make three? And the answer is no. Once you have entered your first Lightning Lane multi-pass attraction, you can then book another selection. This means that you can pretty much have three selections at all times. And that's making it easier and more efficient to get on more attractions, which is great. And this is one way it differs from the old FastPass Plus system. You know, back then you had to use all three of your selections before you could book another one, which meant there probably wasn't much left to choose from. Now, similar to that old FastPass Plus system, there are tiers in which attractions fall into, except for Animal Kingdom. This only applies to Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Disney's Hollywood Studios. 
This divides the attractions up into some of your more highly popular attractions versus the still enjoyable but not as highly in demand attractions. For Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios, guests can select one attraction from the first group and two attractions from group two. If you're someone who says, shoot, I love all the attractions from group two, well, guess what? You can select all three from that second group. It's up to you. Now, remember how I mentioned how you can immediately book another selection after you used your first? Well, let's say the first attraction I had a Lightning Lane multi-pass for was one of those attractions in group one. For example, Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Magic Kingdom is one of those, and once I used it, I can make another top tier attraction selection. Even if that ride was from the second tier, it doesn't matter. I could theoretically hold three top tier attractions if my first two I redeemed were from that second tier group. Now something else to note is once you have used that first selection, if you have an annual pass or a park hopper ticket, you could make a selection at a different park than you're currently at if you planned on park hopping later on. Now as for Lightning Lane Single Pass, it's the same system as Lightning Lane Individual Pass was. This is for those top tiered, highly demanded attractions, and these are purchased separately, so you get access to a single attraction that's on that list. Something to note is any attraction within this list is not included in the Lightning Lane Multi-Pass. Now one of the best parts about this is you can see what selections are available choose them and lock them in before you purchase either option, which I think is fantastic. You know, that way you know exactly what you're getting. Well, there you go. There are some of the changes to Lightning Lane. I hope that helps. And if you still have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer all of them. You know, I really do believe that this is going to improve things a lot and allow you to get even more attractions in on your visit. Well, y'all, thanks for joining me today as I spent what may have been my last time to Dinoland. We'll have to see and going over some of those changes to Lightning Lane. If you're not already subscribed, please consider clicking that button below to subscribe. We'll be notified whenever I have new videos. It really helps me build my channel as well as giving this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. That's going to do it for this one. Remember to stay golden.